All right, so this video is going to go over pages 27 through 29 in your Kinematics 2 packets. We're going to do more free fall practice. So if you drop a golf ball, how far does it fall in 0.5 seconds? So a couple of questions I've had is when do I use Daffy T? Okay, so one hint is anytime we're doing free fall stuff, it's going to be Daffy T. But honestly, what you could do is you could set up Daffy T if you wanted to, just like as a default. And then if you don't have enough to actually do Daffy T, so say you have too little, you don't have at least three things to figure out, or at least three things given to figure out something, then it wouldn't work. Okay, so then you just got to go back to these equations right here, V equals D over T, and acceleration equals change in velocity over time. Okay, so if Daffy T doesn't work, just go back to one of those two, and that's probably it. So if I gave you something like velocity and time, and I just want to know acceleration, then you could just do this one right here. Okay, otherwise, it's going to be Daffy T, which we're about to do a lot of. So if you drop a golf ball, how far does it fall in 0.5 seconds? So we're going to do our Daffy T. Okay, so how far does it fall? So you're looking for your distance, and I gave you time, so it's 0 0.5 seconds. Now, when you're dropping a golf ball, when you're holding it, okay, before you drop it, it's not moving. So that means our initial velocity is going to be zero meters per second. And if you drop something, gravity is always affecting it. And so remember, gravity is at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So anytime we throw something in the air, up in the air, where it's falling back down or dropping something, gravity is going to be the acceleration. Okay, if I have like a car driving on a road, not falling or being thrown in the air, I don't need to use that gravity, that negative 9.8. So it's okay for it to be something different if it's not being thrown in the air or being dropped. But if it is, then we get to use gravity. So that means we don't care about VF. So you would go to your equation sheet and you would use that third equation. So that's the D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Okay, so we're just going to fill in what we know. So D, we don't know. Now, good news is VI is zero, so we can go ahead and get rid of that part. So VIT, we just mark that off, equals one half A, which is negative 9.8, and T is 0 0.5 squared. Okay, so if we saw that in the calculator, D is going to be negative 1.23 meters. And there's your answer. Now, it is okay to have a negative distance because that just means that that's how far it fell. And remember, displacement and velocity and stuff, those are all vectors, so it, direction does matter. So that's just telling you how far it fell. Now, if I asked how, how high was the ball when it dropped, you could just say 1.23 meters. But we'll still accept negative 1.23 because you're telling me how far it fell. Number two, a free-falling object starting from rest attains a velocity of 45 meters per second. How long has it been falling? So let's set up our Daffy T. Okay, so A we know is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, VI is going to be zero because it fell from rest. Attains a velocity of 45 meters per second. So remember, that velocity is going down. Okay, so when it's going down, that's technically a negative 45 meters per second. Okay, so we want to know how long has it been falling, so we're looking for time. So there's your question mark. So that means we did not care about distance at all. So we're going to use equation number one. So VF equals VI plus AT. So we're going to plug in negative 45 equals VI zero. So I'm just going to leave that off equals negative 9.8 T. Okay. So divide both sides by negative 9.8 and you're going to get a time of 4.59 seconds. Now it is okay to have a negative velocity. It just means it's going down. So if I throw something down, it's going to have a negative velocity. If I throw something up, it's going to have a positive velocity. So all that negative did is that just got rid of the signs because if you forgot to leave, if you got to put on that negative on the 45, you're just going to get a negative time. And you would just have to know that you can't have negative 4.59 seconds. So you just have to get rid of that negative in the end. A man falls one meter to the floor. How fast was he going in kilometers per hour when he hit the floor? Okay, so we're going to set up our Daffy T. Okay, so technically, so he technically fell, so that's negative one meters. Gravity is acting on it, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Initial velocity would be zero. Okay, how fast is it going? So that means we're looking for VF. That means we did not care about time. So we're going to do the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Okay, so VF we don't know. We're going to leave that alone. 
vi is zero, so I can go ahead and get rid of that. And then two times, so two times a, which is negative 9.8, times distance, which would be negative one. Now, this is where it would kind of come into play is two times negative 9.8 times negative one. We're gonna have to square root that because we're gonna have to get rid of that vf squared. Okay, so if you forgot that negative one or that negative sign on the di on the distance and you try to take the square root of a negative, you're going to get an error symbol in your calculator. So that's where that negative is going to really help out there. So we're going to do take 2 times negative 9.8, okay, times negative 1, and then we're going to square root both sides to get rid of that squared. So you're going to get a final velocity of 4.43 meters per second. Now, I want it in kilometers per hour. So remember, that's if you multiply it by 3.6. Okay, that'll go to kilometers per hour. And this is technically, since it's falling, it's technically going to be a negative 15.94 kilometers per hour. Okay, or you could say just 15 kilometers, 15.9 kilometers going down. Either one works. And there's your answer. A large rock is dropped from a bridge into the river below. If the time required for it to drop is 1.7 seconds, what velocity does it hit the water? Okay, so when it hits something, even when you drop something, yes, it will eventually come to a stop when it hits the ground, but it will have a final velocity when it hits the ground. So final velocity is not going to be zero in this case. It's got to have a velocity when it hits some when it hits a surface. So we're going to set up Daffy T. Okay, so Daffy T. So A is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, we want to know what is our VF, so that's our, that is our question mark. VI is going to be zero. Time is 1.7 seconds. Okay, that means we did not care about time. I'm sorry, distance, so VF equals VI plus AT. Okay, so VF we don't know. VI is zero, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Negative 9.8 times my time is 1.7. And you're going to get a final velocity of 16.66, well, technically negative 16.66 meters per second down. Okay, that just means negative just means that it was going down when it hit the water. B, what is the height of the bridge above the water? So we're going to set up our Daffy T again. So negative 9.8 is going to be your acceleration. Okay, I want to know distance now. Okay, VI is going to be zero. And I know after 1.7 seconds, seconds, it hit the water. And we're going to go ahead and say that VF, we don't know. So even though we found VF in part A, okay, I would really don't like bringing stuff that I found in one part and bring it into another unless I absolutely have to. Otherwise, I would stick with what's given in the original problem. So we're going to use a third equation. So D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. So good news is VI is zero, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. So D equals one half A, which is negative 9.8, time, which would be 1.7 squared. Okay, and that's going to give you technically a negative 14.16 meters. Okay, but we can go ahead and just change that to a positive because I just want to know how high it was. Negative just means that's how far it fell. Either way is right. Okay, but just for the sake of that answer, we're going to change it to a positive. Five, how many seconds does it take a metal ball drop ball to drop 145 meters from rest? So set up your Daffy T. Okay, we're dropping, so negative 9.8 is going to be your gravity. Okay, how many, so we're dropping it, so initial velocity is going to be zero meters per second. Okay, you're dropping it from rest. How many seconds does it take it to drop? Okay, so you're looking for time, and your distance, it fell 145 meters, so that's going to be negative 145 meters, because that's what's falling. Okay, so how many seconds? So that means we did not care about final velocity, so we're going to use that third equation again. So D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. VI is zero, so we can go ahead and get rid of that VIT. So negative 145 equals 1 half A, which is negative 9.8, T squared. Okay, so what I would do in this case is I would clean up this a little bit. I would take that 1 half times 9.8, which is going to be 19.6. And then I would, devote, I would divide both sides by that negative 
I'm sorry, no, half. I'm sorry, that would be 4.9. So it'd be negative 4.9. And then I would divide both sides by that negative 4.9. Okay, and I would get 29.59 equals t squared. Now, I can't have a squared, so if you want to get rid of it, square root both sides. And you get a time of 5.43 seconds. Six, what velocity does the ball in the previous question reach in that time? Okay, so we're going to set up Daffy T again. Okay, so our distance is still negative 145. A is still negative 9.8. VI is going to be zero. Now I just want to know what is my velocity. And then my time, don't care. Okay. So we're going to use that final equation. So VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Okay, so VF we don't know. So we're going to leave us VF squared. VI is zero, so we don't have to worry about that. So 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 145. Okay, so we're going to get that answer. 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 145. And whenever we get that answer, we're going to go ahead and square root both sides to get rid of that squared and you should get a final velocity of 53.31 meters per second down. And that'd be your answer right there. Seven, if an object is dropped and acquires a velocity of 29.31 meters per second in 3.00 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and just set up Daffy T. And for the sake of timing on this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start writing numbers. I'm not going to worry about units. If you need to go back and look at units, okay, you can rewind. So I have a, I acquire a velocity of 29.31 meters per second. Okay, so that's your final. So negative 29.31. Your initial had to have been zero. Okay, gravity. Well, in this case, I got time. It's 3.00 seconds. Okay, and then it says, what is the acceleration? So now we're actually looking for gravity. And that means I did not care for distance. So we're going to use that first equation, so VF equals VI plus AT. So negative 29.31 equals VI, which is 0, plus A, we don't know, and time would be 3. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that off that A. And you'll end up getting A is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we actually just solved for gravity on that one. Number eight, pitcher throws a baseball straight up in the air with initial speed of 27 meters per second. So now it's a little different. We're throwing something up in the air. So we're going to do our Daffy T. Okay, my initial speed is 27 meters per second. So in order to throw something up in the air, you have to have initial speed. If you're dropping something, initial is going to be zero. But if you're throwing something up in the air, if you're going to go all the way to the top, so if I throw something up, at the top what's going to happen is it's going to stop. So that means my final velocity is going to be zero now. And A is still going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so even if I'm throwing something up, acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So how long does it take to reach the top? So T, you don't know. D, that means we didn't care about distance. We're going to use that first equation. VF equals VI plus AT. So VF is zero. VI is going to be 27 plus A is negative 9.8 times T. Okay, so what I would do is I'd bring that 27 over. That becomes a negative 27 equals negative 9.8 T. So divide both sides by negative 9.8, and you get a time of 2.76 seconds. B, how high does the ball rise and above, above its release point? So that means we're going to do Daffy T again. Now we're actually looking for distance. A is still negative 9.8, VF is still 0, VI is still 27. That means we didn't care about time this, this go-round. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that fifth equation. So VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Okay, so VF, 0. VI is going to be 27. That's squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times D. Now, what I would do is I would move that 27 squared over to the left side of that equi of the equal sign. You cannot combine that with a 2 and the negative 9.8. So I would take that to the other side, and it gets becomes negative. And then I would divide both sides by whatever 2 times negative 9.8 is, which would be 19.6. So 
So I divide both sides by negative 19.6, and that would give you a distance of 37.19 meters. See if the pitcher catches the ball at the same height he threw it from. What velocity does it have when it reaches his glove? So if you throw something up with a velocity of 127 meters per second, okay, and if we don't have wind or air resistance to break to basically lose energy on, that means when it comes back down, whenever it hits my glove, it's going to come back down with a velocity of 127 meters per second. Now, technically, it'd be negative since you're going down now, but it would be the same value. Number nine, a football is kicked straight up in the air at 20 meters per second. So we're going to set up our Daffy T. Okay, so my initial is going to be 20. Okay, calculate its velocity after 1.6 seconds, so time would be 1.6 seconds. I want to know what is VF, so there's your question mark. A is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, and I want to know, I mean, I'm looking for VF, so that means I didn't care about D. So we're going to use equation 1, so VF equals VI plus AT. So VF, I don't know. VI is 20 plus A, which is negative 9.8. And time is 1.6. Okay, so all you got to do is just solve that out. And you're going to get a final velocity of 4.32 meters per second. B, calculate the distance. It is above the point. It was kicked at 1.6 seconds. So that means I'm just looking for distance now. So distance is your question mark. A is still negative 9.8. VF means we don't care about VF. VI was 20. Okay, and time is 1.6 seconds. So we're going to use that third equation. So D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. So D, I don't know. VI is 20. T is 1.6 plus 1 half times A, which is negative 9.8. And time is 1.6 squared. Just make sure your only thing you're squaring is that time, that 1.6. Do not square it all. So all you got to do is just do all your math there and combine it and you should get a distance of 19.46 meters. C, calculate its velocity after 2.9 seconds. Okay, so distance, acceleration, final velocity, initial velocity, and time. So time is 2.9. Okay, so initial velocity is still gonna be that 20. Okay, VF, we wanna know what that is. A is negative 9.8. And that means distance we didn't care about, so we're going to use equation 1. So VF equals VI plus AT. So VF, don't know. VI is 20 plus A, which is negative 9.8, times time, which is 2.9. Okay, so you should get a final velocity of negative 8.42 meters per second squared. Okay, it is okay that it is negative. That means it just it has already reached its peak height, and it's just on its way back down. D, calculate the distance it is above the point it was kicked at 2.9 seconds. So we're now we're just looking for how high was it at 2.9 seconds. So D is your question mark. A is still negative 9.8. Okay, VF doesn't matter. Don't need it. VI is still going to be 20. And time is still going to be 2.9 seconds. So we're going to use equation 3. D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. So distance, I don't know. VI is 20, time is 2.9, plus 1 half A, which is negative 9.8, times time squared, so 2.9 squared. So just solve that out, and you should get a distance of 16.79 meters. E, how long did it take to reach its height? Okay, its maximum height. Okay, so we're going to set up our Daffy T. Okay, initial velocity is going to be 20. Final velocity is 0 because it's at the top. A is negative 9.8. Okay, how long did it take? So that means you're looking for time. That means we don't even care about the distance. Okay, so equation 1, so VF equals VI plus AT. So VF is 0. VI is 20. Plus A, which is negative 9.8, times time. Okay, move that 20 to the other side, it becomes negative 20, divide both sides by negative 9.8, and you should get a time of 2.04 seconds.
All right, and that'll end this video. So the next video is gonna be the review.